Hi, I'm Mahesh Kamath. In this episode, I'm going to tell you about another warrior queen of Indian history, Rani Chennamma of Kelladi. She ruled from 1671 to 1696 in a kingdom of Kelladi. She is remembered for helping Shivaji's younger son, Raja Ram, at a very difficult moment in his life. Most people don't know this, but Shivaji had two sons, Sambhaji and Raja Ram. Sambhaji was captured by Aurangzeb, tortured and killed. And at that point, Raja Ram, only 19 years old, was made Chhatrapati and he had to be the king of the Marathas. And then later on, at a very difficult moment in his life, this queen helped him. And I will tell you about this story and you will know what a major help she gave him. Another part of the story, which is not so well known, is Raja Ram's wife, Tara Bai, was a great military strategist and a warrior queen and she fought many battles against the Mughals. But her story I will tell you on a later episode. So this is the story of Keladi Chinnama. Please watch. Chinnama dealt with the Portuguese who had dominated the Indian coast for 150 years. She saw the coming of the British and the Dutch and the conquest of her neighbours, the Bijapur Adil Shahis, by the Mughals in 1686 and the rise of Shivaji and the Marathas from the 1650s. She dealt with and even fought, indeed, almost all of these powers and managed to maintain a prosperous kingdom, made rich by foreign trade. The kingdom survived till 1763 when it was finally overrun by Hyder Ali of Mysore. In 1664, Somshekar Naika became the ruler of Keladi. Once, as he roamed around the fair at the Rameshwar temple in Keladi, the family deity, his eyes fell upon the young Chennamma, who was a daughter of a lingered merchant, Siddha Pashetti. She has been described as having the complexion of a pearl with bright eyes, a broad forehead, a long nose and curly hair. Stricken by the sudden unforeseen love at first sight event, Somshekar overruled objections with ministers who were horrified of her non-royal background when he mentioned her to them. He married her immediately. Chennama now received a royal education in politics, administration, warfare, weaponry, music, arts and literature. She also started participating in the administration of the kingdom. Unfortunately, they had no offspring. King Somshekar, however, had these weaknesses and these clearly sudden passions which he felt from time to time. A few years later, at a festival during Dashehra, he became enamored of a dancer named Kalavati of Jambukhandi and set her up as a royal dancer and a royal mistress. Her family and evil stepfather, Bharme Mahut, accompanied her to Keladi. The tale goes that the obsessed king moved in with Kalamathi. Sadly, Bharme Mahut started controlling the king with doses of drugs which made him gradually fall sick. His ministers had to visit the king in his new romantic paramour residence for any and all discussions and decisions. At that time, the king ignored the official matters and so the administration was more or less run by the queen with the help of her ministers, the chief of whom was Timma Nayak, a trusted retainer from her father-in-law, Shivappa Nayaka's time. The Sultan of Bijapur saw this as an opportunity to finally acquire the kingdom they had tried to conquer for almost a century. He and his agents bribed Bharmiya Mahot to poison and kill the king. Around that time, the Bijapur army arrived at the borders of Kelani. The king having died, the queen, already in grief and overwhelmed by the numerical superiority of the Bijapur forces, she had to secretly leave with her troops and her treasure for Bhuvanagri, a fort hidden deep in the jungles and ravens. There she was joined by Timanna, who was sad and angry since the king had died. The kingdom had been occupied by the Bijapur forces. Timanna got together an army and managed to ambush the Bijapur forces, which had ventured into the jungle to catch the queen. The Bijapur army was destroyed and the queen triumphantly returned to Bidnur. She had Bharme Mahut executed and jailed their followers and supporters as murderers of the king. Chinnamma also chose a successor. Basapa, the three-year-old son of a relative, Markapa Shetty instead of a Nayak boy. 
Her ascent to the throne was also considered an apt time for neighbors to declare war. Among them, Chikadev Raya Bodeya, the king of Mysore, attacked Kenadi. A number of battles were fought, which finally ended in a French treaty. She was a very intelligent queen. She survived by maintaining a policy of neutrality with her neighbors and grew rich on the Portuguese trade. The Portuguese exported spices and rice from the Keladi ports like Mirjan and Honavar and she allowed them to settle and build their churches. She made a truce with Chhatrapati Shivaji in 1675 and he offered her protection against the Portuguese and the Adil Shahis. But great changes were now afoot in the Deccan. Shivaji, who had dominated the landscape of the Deccan for 35 years, died in 1680. Aurangzeb now made a push to conquer the Deccan and moved south of the Vindhyas. The Mughals had been unsuccessfully trying to conquer the Deccan kingdom since the time of Akbar. Aurangzeb was finally successful. He completed the conquest of Bijapur in 1686 and Golconda in 1687. He then turned his attention to the Marathas, capturing their king, Sambhaji, in 1689 and brutally tortured him to death. After having captured and killed Sambhaji, the Mughals moved inwards, capturing fort by fort of the Marathas. The 19-year-old Raja Ram, Shivaji's younger son, now crowned king of the Marathas, had to flee to the fort of Jinji in the deep south, often considered the most impregnable fort in India. But he had to traverse thousands of kilometers of Mughal territory to reach there. He had a few companions disguised as Lingayat Brahmin pilgrims. He showed up at the Rani's daily alms-giving time as a supplicant and asked her for shelter. As per her royal code of conduct, her Raj Dharma, she felt obliged to give shelter to Raja Ram, especially since he was the son of her benefactor, Chhatrapati Shivaji. Against the advice of her ministers, but the enthusiastic consent of her young son, Basapa, whom she had imbibed with her chivalry court, the Rani aided Raja Ram and helped in his passage to the Jinji fort in the south. She had put her kingdom at the risk of destruction by Aurangzeb, who had a visceral hatred for the Marathas. Chinnama is remembered for this brave act, this quixotic act of courage and principle to take on the wrath of the all-conquering Aurangzeb as a matter of dharma. Against her ministers and her kingdom's own best interests, she chose to protect the son of Shivaji Maharaj, who had given her protection from the Portuguese and the Adil Shahis in the past. As Rajaram left, the Keladi army geared up to face the might of Aurangzeb, fully expecting to be destroyed by the Mughals as effortlessly as an elephant stepping over an ant. Aurangzeb had sent a huge army commanded by Janisar Khan to reduce Kiladi and capture Raja. The army made its way through the dense forest on the way to Bidnur. The Mughal army arrived during the monsoon season with its innumerable bugs and relentless rains and aches and fevers it generated. The soldiers, sick and quagmired, continuously got harassed by the guerrilla attacks of the Rani's forces. Aurangzeb called her a female bear. To her great relief on hearing that Rajaram had reached Jinji, Aurangzeb redirected his army to besiege Jinji. Jinji area is in today's Tamil Nadu state. After reaching safely to Jinji, Rajaram wrote to Rani Chinnama, When kings and rulers of bigger kingdoms refused to help me, you bravely gave me shelter and helped to protect me. I can never forget this bravery and generosity of yours. May Goddess Bhavani give you all happiness. I pray to God that your land may be a land of happiness. Your son, Raja Ram. In her last days, she handed over the administration of the kingdom to Basapa Naika, her adopted son, and devoted herself to spirituality and religion. She went on pilgrimages to Kashi, Rameshwar, Sri Shaila, and Tirupati. She had an agrahara, an entire street with houses on either side built and invited scholars to settle down there. It was named Somshekarpur. She rebuilt a fort in Helikeri, which Pasapa Nayaka later renamed Chennagiri in honor of his mother. She died in 1696, handing over her kingdom to Pasapa Nayaka, later known as 
केलाड़ी बसवराज आई होप यू एंजॉय द स्टोरी थैंक यू